We've implemented a recursive list abstract data type. Now we want to implement the sequence abstraction. What does that mean? That means we need functions that give us the two behaviors of a sequence. Those are to compute the length of the sequence and element selection. A sequence has an element corresponding to any non-negative integer index, and we need to be able to find those elements. So we're going to implement two functions, cast in terms of the functions. Um, so we're going to implement two functions, one to compute the length, one to select elements. And those are going to use our abstract data type, meaning they're going to be implemented in terms of the constructor and selectors that we've already defined. So here's a function which computes the length of an R list. It returns the length of a recursive list S by starting with a length zero and then iterating through the list. During the body of this while loop, S is repeatedly bound just to the rest of S, using up the first element and increasing the length by one. And once we reach the end of the list, which is the empty R list, then we're done and we return the length. So we have a way to compute the length. We also have a way to get an item from it. So we pass in a recursive list S and an index I. And while I is bigger than zero, we move forward in the list by rebinding S to the rest of S and we decrease I by one until it's the case that I is zero, at which point we return the first element of S. Let's do a demonstration of this to see how it works. So remember we're below our abstraction barrier. We're going to implement len r list in terms of r list first rest and the constant empty r list. And it should be the case that when we compute the length of counts, we'll get four. So we start out by binding the name length to zero, while it's the case that S is not the empty R list, we will rebind S and length to the rest of S and length plus one. Our second function, get item R list, takes in not only an R list S, but also an index I and returns the element of s at index i, which for instance, if I compute get item r list on the alts r list that we've created, and I want 0, 1, 2, 3 element at index 3, it should be the number 2. What does this one look like? Well, just like we saw before, while i is greater than zero, we rebind s and i to be the rest of s and one less than we had before. And then eventually we return the first element of s. Let's see if we've done this correctly. Ah, looks good. So all of our doc has passed, which means that if I start an interactive session, well, counts is still defined, and if I compute the length of counts, I'll get four. Now notice this is different than if I assume something about the implementation, such as that it's a tuple and I use the built-in len function. That only gives me two. So the data abstraction that I've created is a recursive list that requires me to use the functions that I defined in order to manipulate it correctly. 